The Curse of Female Creators. That's on my watch list. Right. That's on my watch list. I had this randomly recommended to me on my YouTube feed. And, well, I'm a female content creator. So, I thought, sounds fitting. Let's see if it's interesting. Okay. By talking now. The question I get asked most frequently and feel like I've been asked for years at this point is if I feel like as a woman who streams and does not show any of my body, um, if women who do hot tub streams are hiding me in some way. So it's a very specific question that I get quite frequently. One of the things that still bothers me a little bit about like, I don't know, having- That went by a little bit too fast. Like- If women who do hot tub streams are hiding me in some way. So it's a very specific- My name? My name is there? What? Specific question that I get quite frequently. One of the things that still- Oh my god, I'm sorry. Like, it's- I need to slow this down. Like, I do want to try to understand what she's saying. I'm talking about the question that I get asked most frequently and feel like I've been asked for years at this point is if I feel like as a woman who streams and does not show any of my body, um, if women who do hot tub streams are hurting me in some way. Are hurting me in some way. That is what she said. No. Women that do hot, tums, hot tub streams? Well, okay. It's it's a two-sided blade, I would say. It's a um double-edged sword. Two uh, it's a double uh, it's a two uh, double-edged sword or however the fuck you uh call it, right? Um to one degree, they do make other women look bad. They do make other women look bad, but on the other hand, the audience for those women will only watch those women that's the audience they attract to you don't you don't want this audience like this the women that are in the hot tub uh, section like the audience of the women that are in the hot tub section those aren't the people that you are targeting to begin with it's the kuma audience yes that that is the kuma audience so in one sense no, in the other sense, yes, because it gives women a bad image overall. So it's 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 a yes and no situation, in my opinion. Don't be fooled, Kitsu is also sitting in a hot tub right now and streaming. <laughs> you just don't know it. It's a, it's a very specific question that I get quite frequently. One of the things that still bothers me a little bit about, like, I don't know, having an online presence, I, I can't speak for everyone, obviously, mm -hmm. but I feel like I feel like with a lot of like female creators, you're put in one of two boxes. Right. You are either a innocent, virginal, wholesome being yep. who must be protected, yep. or you're a cop of like, <laughs> and there's no in between. But I have a theory. A lot of a lot of people do put women in that in those two boxes. That is true. Oh, that okay, is some true. Think this is just pokey. You know, pokey gets in trouble because she. That's why this is a big thing. Other people might say sex doesn't work here. It's because she's a woman. Hi, I'm Sudanita, and a lot of people have been asking a lot of details about my stalker. This has been oh going my. on since October last year or so. I've been assaulted, I've been chased, and people have had to restrain my stalker insane, out man. in public, as you wouldn't leave me alone. It should not be a part of my job to have to pay money to get this stuff taken down. It should not be part of my job to be harassed, to see pictures of me nude spread around. It true, true, true. It should not be something that is not on the internet. It should, be, that's, it should be a part of my job. How do you respond when you hear people say that you don't deserve your fame or success? All you do is monetize your, your looks or lick a microphone? I laugh at this Pokemon. I don't think you should be canceled for this, for, for the clip, but I think you should be canceled for this because of what you, what you, who you are. I thought curses weren't real, unknown. Wow. You know what I've just realized? Over the years of consuming content on this platform, there isn't a female creator who I watch regularly. And I know this may sound like a self-report and it's clearly because of the content which I consume, which is true. The content which I consume, girls don't make it. But to be exact, they don't make it how Fair. guys make it. But obviously the same can be said in reverse. Guys don't make content how girls do. If I were to look at the content on YouTube for a gendered lens, I could see that guys pretty much do every type of content. Gaming, music, podcasts, group channels, pranks, vlogs, education. Even makeup, education, animation, e like even the content that women do as well, like makeup content, like shopping content, M men do that too. Fashion, art, reviews, fashion, food, and even makeup. Yeah, there's as a fashion. Guy, if you wanted to start a YouTube tomorrow, you have a whole deck of cards. But what about women? I mean, there's nothing stopping girls from doing gaming content. Nothing stopping them from train surfing or sleeping in a forest or clabbing a bit. Pizza's rapping career is gonna go nuts. <laughs> Someone had a really good point on this. 
um, that um, the reason that there's so many bigger like male uh, streamers and content creators than there are female ones is because well first of all it's a largely male it's largely a male audience and secondly because of that large male audience is it's easier for the audience to somewhat self-insert or like rather like in a way relate to a male streamer or a content creator and i think asma had a really good point on this not to say that females can strive uh because of this at all i mean there are a handful of female successful female streamers but they just aren't as big as the male counterparts because males get judged differently than females that is also true yeah building and yet girls only mainly occupy a few select categories food lifestyle fashion and gaming perhaps the answer isn't that complicated right they make content which aligns with their interests but is it yeah. truly that simple sure because of female creators of grown men and probably about three women have crawled out of their parents face are you also a female mystic scenario my lawyer advised me to answer this question basement tonight to be first in line by the new video game halo 2 I mean, I think this is also why I think I am, um, like, me and my fellow VTubers that are cons uh, currently in this um, female VTuber reaction niche, I I'm gonna call it. Uh, uh, that's why we are currently striving. Because I don't think there's a lot of females that do a lot of reaction content. Like, okay, like, obviously there's Shalili and Iron Mouse who do, like, reactions to, like, memes and all that stuff. Like, they do watch other videos, too. But I haven't seen them, like, upload them actively, constantly, in a manner to YouTube, such as, for example, Esmongold is. And that's why I think that, that me and my, um fellow content creators in this niche are striving at the moment because I think we are filling this tiny niche right now. Females talking about shit like this. On top of that, we're a VTuber. Okay, cool. But we're also just reacting to shit like that. And yeah, I'm personally as well. I, I don't know about the others too much. Like, I don't watch every content video that they create, but the ones I create, I don't shy away from my opinion of calling people out and especially calling other women out. And I feel like that's what people resonate with me as, uh, as well, that I just say how it is and how I feel it and how it should be common sense. That's what I, that's what I feel, you're honest. <laughs> I guess, I guess that's it. Like, I, I feel like calling myself honest, I feel like is feels dishonest to me, you know? <laughs> calling myself honest or, or based feels dishonest to me. But I, I guess that's what it is. <laughs> There was a time on the internet when 99% of the users were male. Guys pretty much outnumber girls like 10,000 to 1. You could probably predict what would happen if a girl were to be spotted in an environment where they pretty much didn't exist. The truth is, being the minority in any environment always comes at a cost. Number 1. You get treated like a protected class so that you aren't treated as lesser for simply being different. Number 2. A portion of people would disagree with the special treatment because it may further the divide between the integration of the minority group with the majority. Basically an argument of equality. Number 3. Okay. As the minority any action you take shall define the group you represent. But there was another factor which affected how girls were treated, and that was the fact that they were girls. A variable which amplified yeah. these three things. Because unlike race, nationality, weight, height, or any other different characteristic, girls were the opposite gender. The gender which they were attracted to, that they would flirt with, that they would try to impress. The gender which they would fly each other over, stake their reputation and pride for, risk their lives, and crash out. But females are the largest minority. And the internet spice, I would I would think so. It so tries to stay logical and exclude feelings to some extent, which is not that common law. I try to. <laughs> I, I I just I don't know. I just try to give my opinion on the matters. I don't even know if I exclude my feelings to that degree. You know, I I just give my opinions on 
what I think about things. <laughs> Now, to make matters more complex, this is all occurring in an environment where anonymity is prevalent, where things can be said and the consequences are non-existent, which is exactly why Windows that XP. era of the internet is known as the Wild West. Back in 2006 and 2008, oh people just uploaded whatever, mostly true. video logs, true, skits, true, true. just the average person messing around with a camera. Then gaming content started becoming more prevalent and it took over for the next few years. Gaming was and still is demographically male majority, but back then the ratio was more staggering. It was essentially a boys club. It wasn't meant to be that yeah, way, that but it became that way. So you could probably. I just did. I don't. Honestly, I don't even think it was intended for video games to be like at the start to be just catered towards guys. I think people just wanted to make video games, you know, and just at the time, guys just more related to the video games. I don't even. I don't think at the start when the first video games came out, they thought about. If they wanted this to be for a male or female audience, it just happened in a sense, is what I think. Probably imagine what would happen when someone who wasn't a boy. Yo! <laughs> Yo! Oh, here, look at this guy. He's living the life. <laughs> He's hanging down the ceiling with duct tape. <laughs> Who wasn't a boy would join the boys club. It truly must be such an odd experience to just want Go make me a sandwich. Are you real girl or just a pre-person kid? Oh my god, this one? This one I've gotten so many times. This one I've gotten so many times that I've been just mistaken as a freaking young boy because of my voice. They thought, oh, this is just a little kid. Shut the fuck up. And then I literally have to explain I'm an adult woman. And they're like, yeah, shut the fuck up. Go back to the kitchen then. The hell is ASL? The hell is ASL? To play the game normally and get treated like someone who's on an FBI's most wanted list. And even worse is being accused of being to in this environment space? because you like the attention. It's on GTFO! Old school you slander. So any complaints you have about sex location. Oh! Ignored. I think the term eager, which has gone through so many evolutions, truly just shows that girls were the black sheep. The term was even used derogatorily sometimes, but that, nevertheless. Yeah, yeah. If it wasn't for TikTok, I don't think I would ever see the term e boy being used because it just didn't happen. Guys, I would. I did. Literally went around Discord. We literally. Like, what do you mean? Just, like. A handful of years back, like maybe a year or two, maybe three back, we call people fuckboy e boys. Like, what do you mean? There were stupid as e boys out there. And no, TikTok didn't matter in this, it was solely on Discord. We were already the majority online, so the term e boy was almost counterintuitive. There was guys, then there were girls, then there were e girls. Now, clearly, this isn't what the internet is like today, but I think it's important to remember the pillars which our current online space was built on. But with that being said, let's move on to expectations. Okay. Now loading chapter two. I started doing voice acting oh and God. creating content on the internet. You were completely faceless, right? Uh, yes. I just didn't want to, yeah. but then people really? were very curious what I looked like because of the voice. Let me tell you, there was a lot of disappointment that day when they saw my face. Did you lead up to the, to the face? Well, let's talk about expectations. Everyone has them, especially when pertaining to content. We can all agree that the first expectation we have is to be entertained. No matter what form of content it is, the content has to be engaging. The next one is the script, yeah. which sometimes can be both, but people tend to only expect one depending on which content they're watching. Comedic or informative. Sometimes they get both, but again, I wouldn't expect to be watching a movie documentary and for the narrator to be making jokes. The same way that I wouldn't expect to be watching a comedy Oh, let me know. I love this channel. Informed. Then I would say knowledge slash mastery. Is the person making the content good at what they doing? Are they proficient? Are they knowledgeable about the topic they're discussing? And lastly would be relatability. Can you relate to that, the creator in any shape or form? Yeah, that, that's the point I was making earlier. Like, relatability I think plays a huge factor into it. I think that plays a huge huge factor Are into it. Me? Thank you for the follow, Marvin! Welcome in! Do you have similar opinions? Are you both knowledgeable? Bob Do, you Russian e -boy. Do you have similar lifestyles? Similar backgrounds? Do you speak the same language? I would say that these four are the main expectations that we all have, but there are two more categories which I don't think we consciously acknowledge. Appearance oh? and role modeling. Role modeling yes. is wherever the content- Yes, yes, yes. Appearance, definitely, definitely. I've talked about this to you. Like, 
I've talked about this so many times, how appearance is in especially a female from it's important for a female content creator because she will just be judged. She will just be judged it on the way she looks. There is nothing else and well as I said for me VTubing takes that kind of takes that buffer kind of away. It somewhat equalizes the playing ground. The creator is someone whose values and attributes you find virtuous or worth emulating. Basically, is the person someone who you could look up to? Is there something about them that you wish you could do or could have? Whether they're a good or a bad person doesn't really matter because even bad people have qualities worth emulating. And then we have appearance. Appearance is an interesting thing because it's usually not the focus of the people. Oh my God. No! Nicardo! Nicardo Avocado! <laughs> oh. Appearance is important for men too. That's why best in the history was looked like Jesus. Content with a few exceptions, but usually we don't say, Okay, I'm gonna watch this YouTube tutorial instead because this person looks better than the other person. Usually we pick whoever we feel is more qualified to deliver instructions and guide us for our DIY operation, right? Dizzy was right? an Apex Legends pro right? player and Twitch streamer who blew up because he was one of the best at the game. He never streamed with a face cam though, opting to instead have a keyboard and mouse camera and only revealing his voice to the public. This wasn't that out of the ordinary, but hiding a part of you only raised curiosity to what wasn't being shown. He would eventually yeah, do a face reveal live on his stream, which, like any other, of a face reveal brought a lot of attention and with it a lot of opinions. Now Dizzy was a positive guy, not revolved in any drama, he was just someone who was talented at a game. But this face reveal brought a whole nother storm which many people think was completely oh, unfair yeah, and undeserved. I don't know how much this affected him or whether the reception discouraged him from going down this route, so I won't speculate. But to this day, Daisy still doesn't do face cam It's a dick reveal when? The creator and Minecraft the speedrunner Dream did oh, a face reveal no. after hitting 30 million subscribers and also got a mixed reception. I know. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Corpse Husband, a horror story narrator who's most- Did he ever do a face reveal? I didn't even know. Notorious for his unique- Like to- Sorry for like pausing play, pausing play, pausing play, but- <laughs> Corpse Husband. The mystery is tantalizing and I will grow expectations over a long period of time. Expectations that the creator can never hope to meet. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it. Okay, I love- I more love that- at just the top stop of movement after taking it off. <laughs> it was a little bit comedic. Oops, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Was this he still making content? I don't even know. Two years ago, latest. Like, I heard, like, something like there was something going on with this throat or something husband a horror story narrator who's mostly notorious for his unique voice is another creator who began garnering mystery surrounding his appearance his voice also earned him a female following for reasons only girls can explain but this only raised expectations to what he would look like whenever a that's a lie that's a lie that's a lie males can also explain why there's so many females chat do the thing, explain why females follow cop husband. I know you know. Like, everybody knows this. Everybody knows why people f <laughs> like that voice. The voice, yes, it's the voice. That voice, man. His voice. <laughs> His voice makes me dumb, bam. There it is. I don't even know who he is, but I know the voice. There it is. <laughs> Corpse husband. Here for the people that don't know. Just click ready when you're ready. Um. Oh, that's just. Uh, we need a random video where he's talking. Where he is talking. Just him. Shit. Hi, if you're new oh. to this and you don't know what Among Us is, it's a game similar there to Mafia is. or Werewolf. We have a group of crewmates on a ship who are trying to do tasks so that we can fix the ship winning the game. There it is. <laughs> That's the voice. That there it is. There's the voice, chat. That's the voice. It's the you my little Discord kitten voice. 
It's a unique yes. voice. It's another creator who began garnering mystery surrounding his appearance. His voice also earned him a female following for reasons only girls can explain, but this only raised expectations to what he would look like whenever a face reveal would happen. This insurmountable pressure is something which wouldn't go unnoticed, which is why a face reveal still hasn't happened and probably never will. Do you think that you're more confident now in your decision to always be faceless than, than you were before? Last year was at my breaking point with it, where that is so fucking uncanny, bro. Bro, that is so uncanny. I don't know what it is, but that is so uncanny. I was just gonna, like, be less careful until it inevitably happened, and now I'm, I feel like I have to be really, really careful again. I, I feel like I would be happier in a world where I could be myself openly and not worry about, like, hiding from everybody. It's good, but right? What is I good? I do think... It's also the best decision for me because I don't think I could handle that many people like judging me at once. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is that I think people tend to attribute success, prowess, or any form of excellence to be a trait of an attractive person. And when those two things don't align, something in their head just can't compute that formula. I think there's two things at play here the halo effect and lookism. The halo effect lookism. is essentially how positive Damn. opinions of one aspect of something can affect how you view all other aspects. So when one trait of a person or thing is used to make an overall judgment of that person or thing. Huh. Acid reflux stuff. Oh, he has something with his throat is all I know. Is essentially how positive opinions of one aspect of something can affect how you view all other aspects. And lookism is prejudice or discriminations towards people you find physically unattractive. Now this may seem like an off-topic tangent, but truthfully I believe that subconsciously people pay attention to appearance quite a bit. The best way to find they out is do. quite simple. Say something which a lot of people disagree with or say something which is morally reprehensible and watch how your appearance suddenly becomes a key point in dismissing anything you Legit! Have to say. Legit! This is constantly what Esmin is facing, man! Like, people are literally just dismissing his opinion because look at him. That's their reason. Just look at him. Like, what? What? So stupid. For the most part, I think these five things are expected of every single content creator, guys and girls. Appearance is the only one where I think things get more complex because as shown previously, people seem to expect talented creators to be above average. But is that truly a fair expectation? I don't think so, but I it's think not, it depends no. on what type of content you make. I would expect- But, but the content creator, they need to- they need to in some sort be better. They need to have an unfair advantage because if the content creator doesn't have an unfair advantage over the viewer, that just means that the viewer, who also wants to be a successful content creator but isn't, is at their own fault for not being one, if the other person doesn't have an unfair advantage. You know what I mean? Like someone giving gym advice to be in shape at the very least. And where did this expectation come from? I'm not quite sure, but my guess is that when people are looking at someone who is more successful than themselves, they expect this person to be a tier above them in every single facet possible, and that includes appearance. Personally, I think this is illogical, but it is the current reality. With expectation comes pressure. Some are self-inflicted and others are forced upon us, but overall, this happens to all creators. But here's why I think women face a unique set of pressure from such expectations. First up is makeup, and I'll explain myself. If being okay. more attractive has been proven to be more beneficial and can even contribute to your success, then it would make sense for a girl to wear makeup. But this is such a weird standard to have when the content that you're making isn't even about your appearance. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this is always what I'm talking about. This, this is exactly always what I'm talking Unlike about. Unlike girls, guys don't sit in front of their mirror for half an hour before they turn on their camera. I can't imagine what it's like to have yeah. to put on makeup just to play Call of Duty. Literally, literally, this is literally one of the reasons why I became a VTuber, man. One of the reasons why I became a VTuber, because it just... It's such a pain in the ass. I, if I want to look ugly for the day, let me look ugly for the day, man. Just, just... Just let me be. Just let me be ugly. <laughs> like, bro. You can roll out of your bed and turn on the stream. Literally. Like, literally. Or Valorant or chess. Now, girls can simply choose not to, but I wouldn't. This she got so much hate for. Like, this. 
This stream, she got so much hate for because here she is without the makeup and people have literally taken a screenshot of an overexposed camera picture of her in the middle of moving and compared it to how she usually way. looks like. And she doesn't even, like, when the video here is playing, she doesn't even look that bad. Valorable she doesn't even look that chess. bad. Now, girls can simply choose not to, but I wouldn't expect someone to do that when every other woman is wearing makeup, especially in an industry where people are fighting for viewer retention. If every girl decided not to do it, then sure, but being the only one to put yourself at a disadvantage is a big ask. But at the same time, now you have girls using live camera filters, and I get the reasoning why, but at what point is it enough? And at what point does it become maladaptive? Guys, guys Pokey has fucking uh, like beauty filters on the camera. Literally, you can see you, you can literally see it flicker on and off. You saying I have makeup? It's not. It's not. It's not like that. You guys are so fucking dumb. It's putting a line on my guys, lips. I'm going to look. Wait, that is so funny. <laughs> He's become such a pretty boy. <laughs> He's such a pretty boy on this one. Hold up. <laughs> Sure, but being the only one to put yourself at a disadvantage is a big ask. But at the same time, now you have girls using live camera Look at him. Filters, and I get the reasoning why, but at what point is it enough? And at what point does it become maladaptive? Guys, guys Pokey has fucking, uh, uh, like, beauty filters on his Pretty boy camera. XTC's literally. curse literally, literally you, you, you is. Literally flicker on and off. You saying I have makeup, it's not, it's not, it's not like that. You guys are so fucking dumb. It's putting a line on my guys, lips. I'm going to look. Look, look, look. Look! Oh, how he said that. I don't even know how he said that. Look how scuffed I look. Are you seeing? This brings me to point number two, which is a- He's been charming from Shrek Lamar. <laughs> I mean, it is sad. Some people really, like, how women do you have to look the fucking prettiest? Otherwise, they will just forever be judged, man. Only people with gamer dent are true gamer and streamer. True! Explicit content, and for this I'll focus mostly on the live stream side of things. Explicit content has always- Oh been my god. Oh my god. All of this controversy, man. All of this controversy. Dude, more bog pious. Bro. Bro. Always be a method of getting clicks. It just is what Not it is. Again. And with the popularization yeah. of sites like OnlyFans and many women again into that content sphere, women that you can literally find in any walk of life, it has created this unprecedented expectation that every single woman may have an OnlyFans. This was <laughs> Like as soon as we see like a woman with like overly pushed makeup and like overly like sexualizing her like looks and is commenting something on twitter or trying to like make an opinion we instantly think yeah she has an only fence i mean we're mostly right we are mostly right and that's sad <laughs> it is just sad that there's so many women actually just having the of man that means two things. He's is a man or she has an OnlyFans. I, Chad, I told you this. I did try to make an OF or a fancy for cat pictures. But uh, it didn't work out because they want actual like um, face um, verification. And I, I'm like, it wasn't worth for the joke, man. That was way too much uh, work for the joke. Like... It was too much work, too much effort. I just deleted both accounts. I just deleted them both. Then I thought, should I do it for Patreon then? But then I thought, no, that that just defeats the point of the joke. And like at this point, nah, it's whatever. It's whatever. It wasn't the case before, but now you could probably find people in random comment sections of female creators asking that she have an OF just because they find a person attractive. The so joke suddenly became unfunny. Yeah, it was just. Uh, that was that. Um, do you have an OnlyFans? No. I do not have an OnlyFans, and I'm not gonna take advantage of our pseudo relationship, sir. Stop paying money to OnlyFans. Go outside, talk to some ladies. It's much healthier for you. Precedents are being set by multiple participants, which seems to also negatively affect those who want no part. I'm just thinking. 
I need a, a body cut out of Asmongold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where to... No. How do you order body cutouts? Custom cardboard cutouts and life size standees. Can... Do they ship to Europe? This is America. You don't have one already? Here, see? Yeah, my bad, chat. My bad. Large format digitally printed and die cut standees. Uh, Europe. The Carpo Carrot Company. Ooh! .co.uk How it works. Send us a photo of a loved one, celebrity, or pet, and we'll send you a high-quality life-size with couple cutout in return. It's as simple as that, with no white border. Oh. How much does it cost? Shop. How much does it cost? He's so cursed sometimes. Oh, drunks. Personalized Yo, that's not too bad. That's actually not too bad for a card up a card out. I I was thinking it's gonna be like two hundred to three hundred. That's not too bad. Do they ship to Germany? Bargain added to the thrill. <laughs> Do they ship to Germany? I shall find this out later. Let's continue with the mov uh, movie, yes. DHL will a full bend it. <laughs> it's getting an Esmond card out when? Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Sort of and overall, it seems that it's brought this stigma against women and resentment that- Of course they'll use their bodies to gain an advantage. They have nothing else to offer. But when these girls <laughs> get rewarded this way for participating in this content style, I can see why they don't care about the costs, especially when it can put them in a different tax bracket. Yeah, it's somewhat of a self-fulfilling prophecy, you know? When you don't sexualize yourself, people will find a way to get out of you. But the moment you give the people what they want in exchange for profit, you're certainly someone unworthy of respect. A true lose-lose situation. Damn if you do, and damn if you don't. Yeah. Can women be funny? No! <laughs> yeah, of course. The scale of edginess. Edginess has always been an interesting element of content to observe, and I think subconsciously people truly desire it. I love this. I love this one it's so been much. An interesting element of content to observe, and I think like this one is so funny, man. People truly desire it. There are a few definitions for the term edgy, so let me define the term first. I would define edginess as a behavior which is not conforming to the current norms of rules, usually for the purpose of being provocative, offensive, and or individuality. When someone is being edgy, they're most likely aware oh that God. the behavior which they're displaying not isn't him. something which is commonly displayed because of the environment they're in. So oftentimes, they pride themselves on being the only ones behaving in this manner, and they don't care about the backlash they get. Over time, they'll begin attracting those who are also in a similar mindset, and here's where the feedback loop- Those are so bad, man. Dude, dude, that's literal children looking up to Sneeko. Over time, they'll begin attracting those who are also in a similar mindset, and here's where- like, what the fuck? The feedback loop begins. Being rebellious is seen in school because people- <laughs> Not Sneeko again. Yeah, it all paths always lead back to Sneeko for some reason. Like authority. Being provocative is seen in school because you're engaging in a behavior which could garner negative effects, but you do so anyway which displays courage and authenticity. Being offensive or toxic is seen in school because being confrontational is better than being silent. It shows fearlessness in addressing what you think is morally reprehensible. Looking at edginess this way, I can see why it's so attractive because in a sense you're watching a superhero mm. someone who's courageous and authentic who fights for what they think is right and isn't afraid of what others think of them all of these are considered positive traits but at the same time there are many who find edginess to be cringe and corny and think that as jay said there is a fine line between edgy and cringe that it's all an act just to seem different. The mistake that people make is thinking that being hateful or toxic is the same as being edgy. Protesting is an edgy behavior and people protest for non-hateful causes all the time. Another mistake people make is thinking oh that my the God, edgier that's you so are, the much more text there. How can you think the Pokemon is... I can't even read that. Realer, oh, realer than me. She never says anything controversial. Being controversial is the true measuring stick for author authenticity. No, it's not. <laughs> what is he on, man? What the hell is he on? 
I know if it's the right thing to do, depending on what the people who ha I hate think about it. I'm not afraid of being cancelled. I'm not afraid of being offensive. I say what I want. I don't care who agrees. Right message, wrong words. <laughs> Saying unpopular opinions makes me realer. Unlike you bots and cheapo. <laughs> chat calling someone an npc is such npc behavior <laughs> like calling someone like bots and sheeple in that manner is such literal like he's becoming the person he hates in that moment but it's oh my god or real moving you are, on which would logically lead to the conclusion that those who are edgy are fake as much as edginess is romanticized what i've noticed is that being edgy sort of desensitizes you which in turn also desensitizes your community because it makes it easier for toxicity to grow because well kickstreamer ko's woman and jack doherty fight club broadcast excuse me what come again there's no rules and the rules which do exist no one cares about following it because remember we're edgy rebellious productive edgy. offensive etc so after countless hours of research i've created this chart which at first glance looks awfully similar to the alignment chart and yeah. you would be correct that's exactly what it is you may disagree with some of these placements and that's fine this is just my subjective opinion I've oh already spent two it's about craters okay okay let's let's look at it let's let's take a look see chat um so on the top on the very top here, we have good, then lawful, evil, chaotic, neutral. So, good, neutral, lawful, neutral, lawful, good, and all that stuff. Okay, let's see who is in freaking evil. Evil, evil, evil. Hassan, Sniper Wolf, Illuminati. Oh my god, Illuminati. Where would you be? I don't know. Uh, definitely on the chaotic side and probably on the good side. Like, I, I'm guessing, like, good chaotic is somewhere good chaotic, kind of, and good chaotic... It's just aiming for the bottom right. <laughs> I would think chaotic was more likely. Definitely somewhat chaotic, but... Like, when I, like, look at this in comparison, I'm not as chaotic as these people. Like, Meat Canyon, XQC, De uh, Destiny, Beldefine, Morgpie, Amaran, Dr. Disparate Respect, Invader Vi, Kaisenach, I Shall Speed, Tana Mongo. I'm not as chaotic as these people. Kids, you never played D&D, did you? Unfortunately, no. Also, thank you for the follow, Fox King. Hey, yo! Thank you. Um... So maybe it would be more in a lawful direction? I don't know. First glance, it looks awfully similar to your alignment chart, and you would be correct. That's exactly what it is. You may disagree with some of these placements, and that's fine. This is just my subjective opinion. I've already... Sniper Wolf is lawful? What the fuck? She is... Uh, she was under correct. evil that's lawful, exactly wasn't she? You made... Where is it? easier for toxicity to grow but the because well neutral there's good. no rules and the rules which do um, exist no one cares about following it because remember we're edgy rebellious provocative offensive etc so after countless hours of maybe he did this video before the doctor disrespect shit came out you know also, the good, the good part is here. I, I don't know how exactly to take this, man. I, I, I don't exactly know how to read this because it looks similar than the other one, but it's not exactly it, he said, so... Yeah. Research, I've created this chart, which at first glance looks awfully similar to the alignment chart. Like, lawful good, neutral good, chaotic good, chaotic neutral, true neutral, and lawful neutral and all that stuff, you know? So, none of these are chaotic neutral. It's more gradient. Yeah. And you would be correct. That's exactly what it is. You may disagree with some of these placements, and that's fine. This is just my subjective opinion. I've already spent too much time going back and forth on this, and this is what fair, I ended up fair. with. Fair, fair. But anyway, 
onto the analysis. I like to think that edgy behavior has a large overlap with chaotic behavior and by looking at this chart we can see that the majority of edgy creators are men. What I've noticed is that when women start creating content they start off safer and more mellow and kind of just dipping their toes into the water. But male creators hit the ground running. They're loud, abrasive, divisive, toxic, etc. But this may be because guys are used to the environment which gaming has always been toxic, edgy, competitive, etc. Seeing a guy being edgy online is nothing new and we have that been conditioned true, yeah. to expect this. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah, definitely. God damn! Definitely, no, no, no. Fruit? Nobody wanna sit there and block the same shit for three, four seasons. You ain't talented. I'm talented. Another aspect to consider is that being edgy is polarizing and polarizing figures are both heavily liked and disliked. There's no in between. Because remember, the content creator has put themselves in a position of extremes. If women are ready to deal with a set of circumstances online, I can see why they wouldn't want to add another aspect which could amplify these circumstances. Hmm. It's important to remember that the feedback that you receive is a result of the audience that you've built and the type of content that you make. It's why certain creators can say certain things and get a minimal amount of flack for it, but the same can't be said if someone else tried to do the same. Female creators tend to attract a more female audience, and how receptive are women to edgy content? I wait, wait, wait. Can say certain things and get a minimal amount of flack for it, but the same can't be said if someone else tried to do the same. Female creators tend to attract a more female audience. And okay, just uh, give me a moment, chat. Just one moment. Because I am disagreeing with that sentiment at all. Like, completely. I am disagreeing with this. Let me just... Okay. Bum -ba -dum -ba -dum. No, let me... Open link. Okay, chat. This is my current demographic, so female to male. This. This is my current demographics. Three percent female. Three point one percent female. Yep. So now, females also attract a large male audience. You get another zero point one percent female. Yeah, that's amazing. Females also attract a large male audience. Like, I I I need to listen to this again. Stances. It's important to remember that the feedback that you receive is a result of the audience that you've built and the type of content that you make. It's why certain creators can say certain things and get a minimal amount of flack for it, but the same can't be said if someone else tried to do the same. Female creators tend to attract a more female audience, and how receptive. It just. I just don't agree with this. I mean... Okay, if we now compare to probably Esmongold, Esmongold probably only has a 1% female audience, so... I would have a higher one, but it's still not largely female. Like... There's just not that many female people that do watch content creators and shit, I would say. I don't know what women do nowadays, man. But it seems like... They're just not there, <laughs> you know? But yes, there are a handful of women, <laughs> but it's just a male-dominated space, and it, it just is what it is. Are women to edgy content? Are they fans of it? Can women relate to a content creator who behaves that way? They might expect it from a guy, but from a girl, maybe not as much. Being edgy or chaotic is the equivalent of digging a tunnel. You're literally pushing a limit and allowing yourself more breathing room. But push a limit too far, and you risk everything collapsing on you. These content creators have allowed themselves enough breathing room to be as edgy as they want, and that's the thing. Being edgy is a molding process. It's shedding. Women don't usually go down this route at all, so their room for being edgy isn't as large. The most common form of edginess a girl will utilize is probably NSFW content, which is clearly what we can see here with a few exceptions. 
I would disagree with the notion that edgy content is not safe for work content. Like, or the other way around, that not safe for work content is edgy content. Because, like, that that's just not what edgy is. Like, he literally defined edgy earlier, and this is just not what edgy is. One thing I don't agree with is the demonization of those who create safer content and the assumption that those who do are silenced and muzzled from saying their own opinion because of the audience they have. What people don't realize is that the theory can go both ways. The creators who exist over here can't really dumb down their edginess or else their audience will call them boring and scared, they'll get accused of becoming soft and they'll be told that they're losing their edge. I don't know if, if, if you want to talk about this or not, or if we're going to lower the tone a bit here, but didn't you actually have like a serious issue with a stalker once? It's all well and good us like laughing oh, at the creepy Sweden DMs, Utah, but there is a time. Uh, um, there's a good amount of edgy female CCS as well, content creators, I guess. Uh, just the current society cancels you if you go too far. Uh, can you give me a few examples I can't think of any on, on the top of my head? Like, I'm not disagreeing with you, I just can't uh, think of any. Ed, yes, I know. Sorry, sorry, chat. Sorry. I don't know if, if if you want to talk about this or not, or if we're going to lower the tone a bit here. But didn't you actually have like a serious issue with a stalker once? It's all well and good us like laughing at the creepy DMs, but there is a time when it can go too far, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. There are times when it has. There does, sir. Bad. Um, I have so some bad YouTubers, for example. Yeah, I guess. But, who? Who would you call edgy as a VTuber? Edgy, like real edginess. I mean, I guess Nyanas would lean into the edginess, I guess. Nyanas would definitely lean into it. Bao definitely leans into it as well, but she's more on the not safe for work side than edgy. Fillion is pretty edgy. That's true, Fillion. Shy Lily is... Uh, uh, Chet, we're, we're not male because of her career. No, Chet, we're looking away from not safe for work stuff. Uh, we're looking away from not safe for work stuff. Should we make an alignment chat for a VTuber? I don't... I don't know what that means. That's terrible. I don't know why people think it's okay to do that. Wait, what? I know someone who stopped streaming for months and one of those reasons why they had a stalker. Oh my god, that's so terrible. Alignment chart. Oh, the chart? Like the uh, good, lawful, neutral one? Numi can be all over the map. That's also true. Like, um, with Shay Lily? Shalili is also leaning more into the not safe for work stuff rather than edginess, I would say. Like, I guess there's also a thin line between edginess and not safe for work. I'd say they're more into unhinged than edgy. Yeah, 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 yeah. More unhinged than edgy. That that is more true. They, I have no comment on they since I don't actually know what kind of uh, content they does like the last time i saw something from they was her looking at her tits and her 3d mate outfit <laughs> that's the last content i saw from they <laughs> squeeze pretty edgy squeeze also pretty unhinged in that matter want Numi be her own alignment <laughs> generally is edgy not edgy that is true actually edgy 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 how the fuck you pronounce it that is true it's 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 etchy, 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 and it's etchy. Nero? I don't know about Nero. How would we see Smug Alana then? You know what? Smug Alana is edgy. Yes, I would I would definitely put Smug Alana into edgy. That one, yes. I think edgy and unhinged is essentially the same thing, since unhinged means you just don't have any lines you set for how far you take shit. Mm, I think they're pretty similar, but I wouldn't say they're the same exactly. Evil Nero, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Um, but... Do you know Mind Goblin? No, I don't. I do not. I do not. A good example for actual edginess is what pink guy is doing. Yes, very true. Very true. 
freaking pink guy, man. Oh. Stalkers in the past. But the Let's one that sticks on. out for everyone is one of the worst. I think in the top five, I'd say. And in the top five? How many have you had? <laughs> I'm streaming quite a few. Have you ever heard of the expression, she has no multiple... bite more than you can wait. chew? What... Wait, wait, wait. Did she have multiple... I'm sorry, I'm going to replay the entire section since we just had a discussion started in between there. I'm so sorry, everyone. I don't know if, if, if you want to talk about this or not, or if we're going to lower the tone of it here, but didn't you actually have like a serious issue with a stalker once? It's all well and good us like laughing at the creepy DMs, but there is a time when it can go too far, isn't there? There are times when it has gotten bad. Um, I have had bad stalkers in the past, but the one that sticks out for everyone is one of the worst. I think in the top five, I'd say. And in the top five? She has had? had multiple... I'm quite a few. I don't understand why it's exactly Sweden either who has had so many stalkers. Why? Like, there's so many other female creators out there. Why are there so many that especially target her? Like, I feel so bad for her. Have you ever heard of the expression, don't bite more than you can chew? But what about someone who's forced to chew something they never bit in the first place? That's essentially what parasocialism is. A word which is dead because people Here we go. once Par again parasocialism. and overuse the word to the point of meaninglessness. But it's something which plagues anyone with notoriety. We can clearly see this with musicians. The fan bases are loyal, sometimes to the point of obsession. Fan interactions oh my God, the Swifties, man. social media. And even now, they don't happen too often. Swifties are so freaking... Unhinged. There it is. They're unhinged. They're unhinged. Not edgy, they're unhinged. <laughs> there, there's the difference. <laughs> depending on the artist. It's a little different with content creators, however, because fan interactions are very common and the fan bases don't exist here. Communities do. And I would say that live streamers probably get the worst of it because feedback is instant. Type some stupid shit in a chat and what you'll get a reaction. Give the creator the some fuck? props and you'll get a reaction. Seeing the day to day of someone's life, the highs and lows, people tend to feel closer to a person like this, especially when you they know can relate to them. These bonds are, of course, not real. They're one sided and aren't an accurate Herb. depiction of a healthy relationship. I'll be honest, I don't know the data on this, but it wouldn't surprise me if the majority of female creators of a large. JD Ahn gets a call from Ahsoka threatening to kill her dad. What the fuck is that about? Excuse me, what? Does anyone know about this? Holy shit! Following have experienced a stalker problem at least once. Guys who develop parasocial relationships are mentally not all the way there and have fallen in love with someone on their screen and not make it their pet project to meet the person who they're infatuated with. Some people are in so deep that the moment they find out the creator is not single, they actually feel a sense of betrayal like they were cheated on because in their minds, they actually yeah. had a chance with these creators. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, now you got female creators getting deep fakes for gooning purposes like that is so disgusting, man. That is so, so, so disgusting. And it should be outlawed. I don't know if it is. I hope it is. I'm not sure if it is. But it definitely should be. They they have to goon. They just they just gotta goon. They just gotta goon. So remember, even when you don't <laughs> gooning, yourself, someone out there will. Like I said before. Damned if you do, and damned if you don't. All of these things do happen to male creators as well, and let's not be ignorant to that. But majority of these deep fakes and stalking victims are women. Girls aren't the ones clipping moments. Ultimate Twitch Hot Girls Moments. Number one. Okay. Okay. Which sexy girl streamer think moments compilation with Pokimane, of course, in the <laughs> in the thumbnail. So when guys stand up and walk away from the camera and make YouTube compilations out of them. It oh, is that a lot on YouTube? How is it not a lot on YouTube? If it doesn't um, breach, like if for the most part it doesn't breach um, Twitch's TOS, it doesn't. It usually doesn't breach uh, YouTube's TOS either. What the fuck? I didn't know those existed. Right? Really? Uh, wait, what? You guys didn't know? It just doesn't happen. And although some of you may think that you would like to be in a position where someone gives you large amounts of money, I wouldn't want a fan like this because I know they're expecting much more than I can give them in return. <laughs> this level of... <laughs> And although some of you may think that you would like to be in a position where someone gives you large amounts of money, I wouldn't want a fan like this because I know they're expecting much she more than to give them in return. This she just walked away. I can't even focus on what he's saying. 
Oh, no, I would just... Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, oh, that feels so bad. Look at the guy in the back. Wait, you can't even see the guy in the back. Look at him. He's just like, yeah, yeah what an idiot. <laughs> yeah, what an idiot. <laughs> oh my god. Money doesn't happen. And although some of you may think that you would like to be in a position where someone gives you large amounts of money, I wouldn't want a fan like this because I know they're expecting much more that I can give them in return. This level of obsession is high risk, it's volatile, a balloon waiting to pop, a bomb ready to explode. I know it may seem like a circumstance to be envious of, but believe If I was a girl and I had that many followers, I would a thousand percent milk all of those dudes for their money. If they're that stupid, then just t Darwinism at that point. I've heard this so many times, man. I have heard this sentence from guys so many times, actually. To the point that I'm actually sick and tired of hearing this one. I'm so sick and tired of hearing this. Oh, I would tell my body, of course I would, like... It's just... I... I'm just... Oh, I'm just sick and tired of hearing this. Rims all day, thank you for the follow. It's like... Literally, as he said, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like, it's literally just objectifying in the end again. Which, usually... Usually, I don't care about objective... Like, uh, about objectifying and bullshit like that. I usually, like, don't even talk about that shit. But this one? Th this one is a pet peeve of mine. Believe me, it's not worth it. And the girls who take advantage of such people are literally playing with fire. I know this is definitely an unpopular topic to even discuss because the internet is just a very divisive space and we're talking about women which if anyone tries to defend or show the smallest bit of compassion to, you're seen as a plethora of things. Let's be honest. But I thought to myself, if I was a girl and I wanted to- uh, For a moment there, I thought it was Mackie's and I got excited. Oh, I just want a normal life if it was a female stream. No amount of money can help mental scars. I it can suppress it, but won't go away. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly that. Exactly that. To, you're seen as a plethora of things, let's be honest. But I thought to myself, if I was a girl and I wanted to do YouTube or even just live stream, what would I do? And how different would the road to success be in comparison to the male counterparts? It's also hard to get people to empathize with a category of creators where a subcategory makes it optically impossible to say anything because the choice of content creation is controversial. Especially... The titties. The titties. The frickin' titties. Especially when a TOS of a particular platform seems to be highly favorable towards such a group. But painting all female creators under this brush is dumb. That would be the same as generalizing kick streamers as the whole of the live streaming space, but I digress. The online experience of girls has been an interesting thing to observe and research. The past which they take in content creation, Shoo. how they integrated, but ultimately I'm not a girl so I would be curious to hear that perspective on this video, as well as your opinion, the person watching. Because maybe I've got it all wrong. Maybe it's not that serious. Thank you for the raid! Hey Everest! How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? Uh, let me just... Maybe I think this video is about to be over. Creators. Give me just a moment. Maybe this curse is nothing but an illusion. The video is literally over. Thank you so much for the raid. Um, We were just watching this video about the curse of female creators. Why not? Fitting that you read it as another female creator. Mom drives 90 oh. minutes to the beach, then- Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. Um, but this was a really good video. This was a really good video chat. Did I link it? I did. Oh my god, I did. This was a really, really good video, I would say. Um, he made some good points, some L takes. Uh, I got nothing else to say about this. <laughs> That's all. That's all. Thanks for watching, YouTubes. <laughs>